She's the dumbest person to ever play the lottery, and I'll say this right now. She shows me her paper, and she chose 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, Powerball, 66. Why is that crazy? You can choose any number. Why yeah. is it crazy? Why is the that crazy? Odds, the odds are all the same, though. No, it's yes, not. Yes, that's it what is. I'm the saying. odds are, that's no matter what, what the number is. For them to be in a sequence, the odds are way greater. We're on, you're both idiots. No. I, I do one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's what don't. I do. Yeah, I do. You, you see wait. the you see the odds are different she if thinks, you do random she thinks numbers. She's hacked a lot of yeah. but she's never think, won. Have you ever f won it? No! You've no. never won it, man. I can't believe this is yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kim Congdon doesn't have any idea what she's talking about. Bobby Lee is right and Sarah Weinshank is right too. Let me show you why she's wrong and things you can actually do to improve your expected value in the lottery today on Jack Ace. What up, donkeys? Jack Hayes here from jackhayes.com, where I talk about my three favorite topics, gambling, crypto, and STEM. And I have a lot of things to say about the lottery. And as someone with a degree in actuarial mathematics and as someone who loves gambling, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the lottery. But as far as Kim Congdon's statement goes, she's 100% incorrect. First of all, she's incorrect because it's impossible to pick 66 as the Powerball. The Powerball numbers only go up to 26. But let's just assume that she's talking about the lottery pick 22, 33, 44, 55, 66 with the Powerball 11. That ticket has an equal chance of being picked as any other combination. If you don't believe me, then just tell me what the probability of that combination winning is. There are 292,201,338 different combinations and 22, 33, 44, 55, 66 with Powerball 11 has a 1 in 292,201,338 chance of being the winner. And if you got a quick pick ticket, there's a 1 in 292,201,338 chance of that ticket being the winner. And there's a 1 in 292,201,338 chance of the last drawings number being the winner. And if Hurley's lottery numbers from the TV show Lost were possible, that would have the same probability too. And you can't pick his numbers because the Mega Ball and the Power Ball don't go that high. But my point is, every combination has an equal chance of being chosen. What Kim is probably trying to say is that if you look at every single lottery drawing, there has never been an easily recognizable series of numbers. And that's true, but you can't work backwards like that. There's only been fewer than 10,000 lottery drawings in the US between both Powerball and Mega Millions. We've only penetrated around 0.0033% of the possible combinations so far. And if you think of all the combinations that are sequential, there are probably only a few hundred possible combinations that will qualify. And that's the main reason why we haven't seen a sequential set of numbers so far. If you want to see something similar but on a smaller scale, let's look at the probability of rolling six different dice. If the dice are different colors, we can look at the permutations of all outcomes. If you had to predict the outcome of a single six die roll, would it be stupid to pick one, two, three, four, five, six? No. It makes no difference compared to any other permutation. Of the six to the sixth power permutations, which is 46,656, there's exactly one outcome that matches. There's also one outcome that matches 111, 111. There's also one outcome that matches 222, 222. And there's also one outcome that matches every six number permutation. And so here I wrote a quick simulator that simulates 100 million of these six dice rolls. And of those 100 million trials, you'd expect a one to six sequential result every 46,656 rolls or approximately 2,143 times. And as you can see, we get approximately that for the one to six sequence, we get approximately that for the 6 to 1 sequence, and we get approximately that number for each of the 6 dice Yahtzees. There's absolutely nothing special about these results that makes them more or less likely. Now this is not the same as saying two tickets will always have the same expected value. I think it's true that picking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with Powerball 6 has a much lower expected value than your typical quick pick. And that's because there are people like Bobby Lee who think they're being clever by picking these numbers but they're not being clever. I'd bet big money that there are at least two or three of these people in every drawing who specifically choose these numbers because they think other people won't pick them. But if you pick numbers that other people might pick, you're greatly reducing your expected value, which is already horrendous to begin with. And that's because when there are multiple winners of the grand prize, the prize money is not multiplied by the number of winners. The grand prize jackpot is a fixed value at the time of the drawing and is split amongst all of the winners. When you play the lottery, a significant part of your expected value comes from the payout you'd get from winning the grand prize. So if you come out of the gate with a combination that other people might pick, 
you're painting yourself into a corner. You're significantly reducing the ceiling of what you can win. And it's not just specific combinations. You probably want to avoid certain numbers as well. The number seven is considered lucky by many people in the US. And the number eight is considered lucky by many Chinese people since the word for the number eight sounds similar to the word for wealth. And in general, I try not to pick many numbers 31 and lower since many people pick their birthday or their friend's birthdays. I pick four numbers, they were all okay. For the fifth and sixth, I use my birthday, but I erased my birthday and said better yet, I use the birthday of a girly that I just met. And I've gotten into heated arguments with internet trolls about the scenario where one person gets two tickets with the same numbers. If you ever find yourself in this situation, you've reduced the expectation on a per ticket basis. Because if you get two of something, you should expect to get double the value. If you get two loaves of bread, you should expect to be able to make twice as many sandwiches. But if you get two lottery tickets with identical numbers, it's like someone replaced some of the slices in the second loaf with extra end pieces. And that's because if you have two different tickets, you have two chances of winning the grand prize. Instead of having a one in 292 million chance of winning, now you have a one in 146 million chance of winning. But if you have two identical tickets, you still have a one in 292 million chance of winning. And you could maintain your expected value if you got paid double the jackpot, but compared to winning with a single ticket, you never do. And people always respond that you get two shares of the jackpot, which is double of what you would get if you only had one ticket, but that is wrong. Let's look at three different scenarios for a $300 million jackpot. Let's look at you being the only winner, you splitting it with one other person, and you splitting it with two other people. If you're the only winner, you actually end up losing money compared to if you had just had that single winning ticket. In this case, you spent $2 and you won $300 million. Congratulations, you're up $299,999,998. If you bought two identical tickets, you would have spent $4 and you'd only be up $299,999,996. So you're not up double the money. You're actually down compared to the one ticket scenario. So based on this specific scenario alone, that should be enough to prove to you that you're getting less than double your value by buying that second duplicate ticket. But wait, there's more. If you split the grand prize with one other person, in the one ticket scenario, you'd have 150 million for the ticket. But if you have two identical winning tickets, now each ticket is only worth 100 million. Your total value is 200 million and only went up 33% instead of 100%. And in the scenario with two other winners, you would have won 100 million for your single ticket. But if you had two identical winning tickets, each ticket would only be worth 75 million. Your total value is 150 million and only went up 50% instead of 100. Many people ignore the fact that if you hadn't bought that duplicate ticket, your single slice of the pie would be bigger than each of the two slices you'd get if you bought a duplicate ticket. So no, having two identical tickets does not mean you will double your winnings in every scenario. If you still don't believe me, then consider the scenario of trying to buy every single combination. Let's say the jackpot is insanely high and you get the bright idea of trying to buy every single combination because of the overlay. Would you buy 292 million quick picks? If you're smart, then the answer should be oh No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 If you buy that many quick picks, you'd certainly get duplicates, which means you definitely have gaps in your attempt to cover all possible combinations. And since your goal is to guarantee a win, leaving gaps in the covered combinations could easily result in you holding an empty bag. And so if you want to maximize your EV, you want to ensure unique combinations on all your tickets. And I think most people recognize this, but they don't see how this works on a smaller scale where you only have two or three duplicate tickets. Your goal when playing the lottery should be to cover as much of the field as possible when buying multiple tickets. And you obviously can't do that if you get duplicate tickets. So if you want to maximize your EV when buying lottery tickets, you can do a couple of things. Hand pick your numbers to assure distinct picks. Avoid lucky numbers and possible birthday numbers to prevent collisions. And you could avoid gimmicky sequences like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or other sequential numbers, or Hurley's numbers from Lost. So what's your strategy for playing the lottery? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this content, remember to smash the like button and hit subscribe. Always gamble responsibly, and peace out, donkeys.